We're delighted to have all of you uh, with us today for this webinar from Van Andel Institute Graduate School. The focus of our discussion will be why VAI? It'll be an introduction to our institute, to our graduate school, and to some of our graduate students who will tell you a bit about their experiences here and answer some of your questions. Next slide. I wanted to let you know that this is being recorded so that we can provide this webinar back to you if you want to see it uh, in further detail or for others who aren't able to join us today. We encourage you to ask questions using the Q&A feature of the Zoom program. You'll likely find that um, on the bottom of your screen if you're using a computer-based version of Zoom. We encourage you to use the full screen mode to see this webinar best. So let's start by talking a bit about the graduate, about the Van Andel Institute. Next slide. We're an independent research institute. What that means is we are not affiliated with any, any a university or college or company. We're a standalone independent research institute located in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We do basic biomedical research on several diseases, cancers, neurodegenerative diseases, and metabolic disorders. And we approach those diseases using several different scientific uh, methods. We use epigenetics and metabolomics. We do genetics and cell biology. We do structural biology to understand more about the basis of these diseases and ways that we might be able to diagnose or treat these diseases. Next. The graduate school here has as its mission to develop biomedical research leaders. And that mission means that we are focused on you, the students, becoming prepared for the careers you will have later as leaders in biomedical research. Next. A consequence of that, a corollary of that, is that the students in our graduate school are regarded as scientists and as colleagues. An important consequence of that has to do with our curriculum. Because we are a scientific institute and because we regard our students as scientists, we want students to start thinking and acting like scientists from the very start. In other institutions that offer degrees in molecular and cell biology, an umbrella program might provide courses in biochemistry, cell biology, pharmacology, physiology. But that's not really how scientists work. Scientists attacking these problems will draw on any of those disciplines in order to address the problem at hand. And that's how we've structured our curriculum, not by disciplines, but by learning how to attack scientific problems. Next. Another advantage of our graduate school is the outstanding support. We have great financial support for our students. We offer a stipend of about $36,000 a year. We have health and dental and vision insurance. We provide our students with $2,000 every year to go to conferences and workshops because we want you to engage in the scientific field, the discipline in which you are working. And in order to bring you to Grand Rapids, we'll offer a relocation supplement depending on how far you have to travel to get here. Next. So there are some reasons why you might choose Van Andel Institute as the place for your graduate education and for your PhD in molecular and cell biology. All of those together lead uh, to a small and collaborative community. We aren't huge. We aren't a university size. We have about 40 scientists leading research laboratories. We have about 40 graduate students in our program. So we're small and collaborative. We work very closely together, which means that you won't get lost. And the stories of, of being a graduate student here will be told by three of our current students who are joining us on the call, April Rickle, Bailey Tibben, and Leslie Wyman. And so I'll give each of them a few moments now to introduce themselves. But let's start with April. Hi, my name's April Rickle. Um, I am a second year student currently at the Van Andel Graduate School. I graduated in 2015 from Rutgers University in New Jersey and moved here last year in order to um, 
in order to join the program. And I'm very excited to speak with all of you. I'm in Heidi Lim Prattle's lab. Bailey, why don't you introduce yourself? Hello, uh, my name is Bailey Tippin. Um, I did my undergraduate at the University of Arizona before moving to Grand Rapids to join VEI's graduate program. Um, and I currently work in Scott Rothbard's lab in the Center for Epigenetics studying uh, pediatric mutations and uh, histones. And now, uh, Leslie. Hello, everyone. My name is Leslie Wyman. Um, I am a local to Grand Rapids, and I uh, started at the community college here in Grand Rapids and worked my way up. Um, from that, I transferred to Grand Valley State University, and now I am a six-year graduate student in Darren Moore's lab, where we study the molecular mechanisms of neurodegeneration and Parkinson's disease. Thank you for joining us. So let me throw one question out to each of you. Uh, what was it that led you to choose Van Andel Institute for graduate school among the other options that you might have considered? Uh, Leslie, let's stay with you for right now. How, how did you make that choice? Sure, well, the choice was really easy for me, being that I'm local to Grand Rapids. Um, I've known about Van Andel for a very long time. It has a great reputation um, in our city and I think that the program is really attractive for many reasons. And probably the biggest one to me was the small collaborative nature of uh, Van Andel and that it really gives students a voice and an opportunity to shine um, rather than blend in and disappear in a crowd, which I think that you get in the big university feel. Bailey, for you, what was it about Van Andel uh, among the other institutions you were considering for graduate school? Um, so when I first found Van Andel, I was really excited about the small size and the translational focus. So VEI focuses heavily on improving human health through biomedical research, and that is exactly what I wanted to do with my career. And so that intense focus really was a draw for me. And like Leslie mentioned, I also was very drawn to the small collaborative nature of the Institute. When I came to interview in Grand Rapids, it just, you can feel that vibe in the building. And I knew that was something that I wanted to be a part of. April, you made that decision most recently of the students who are with us today. What was behind your reasons for choosing Van Andel among the options that you had in, to consider? So I really liked the small class size and how um, individual the support for all the students was. And then also one of my favorite questions to ask the students that I would meet when I was interviewing was if you could change anything about this program, what would you change? And every single student I spoke to at VAI said nothing. They all seemed very happy with the program. So geography matters for some people in making this decision. Leslie, for you, you were already in Grand Rapids and you knew of the Institute and were settled in this community. Uh, April and Bailey came from very distant places, uh, one further west, one further east. So April, uh, let's start with you. Um, how did the geography and the, the environment of Grand Rapids play into your decision? Um, geography was not my number one consideration for picking a graduate school. Um, I certainly had never heard of Grand Rapids before I uh, came to VAI. So it was definitely nice to hear that I wasn't going to be in the middle of nowhere. It's the, um, for those of you who may not know, it's the second largest city in Michigan. Um, and it's not terribly far from home for me. It's about a two hour plane ride, which I thought was very manageable. And Bailey, you came from, from the West. For me, it was a, kind of a scary decision to decide to pick up and move across to the country to Michigan. Growing up in Arizona, I've never experienced a winter before. Uh, I was a little scared that I wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, but for me, like I mentioned before, the support at Van Andel and the community feel really made me feel like I was going to be able to do it, even though I was moving to a place where I had no one. Um, and now that I've been here, I'm starting my fourth year. Um, I've survived the winters. They're not as bad as you think. 
you can do it. You just got to get good boots and good coat. Um, and I think I've met so many people in the graduate school and outside of the graduate school that have just really made me love Grand Rapids. And my mom doesn't like to hear it, but I, I don't think I'm ever going to move back west. I love, I love Michigan. I love Grand Rapids. A number of the folks who are with us today are contemplating graduate school and, and the application process. As each of you thinks back to your decision, what do you know now that you wish you knew then or that you wish you had asked about then? Uh, Bailey, let's, let's stay with you. So th this was kind of a tough one for me. I've been thinking on this question a lot. I've been asked a few times. Um, and I think for me, it was more knowing what I wanted myself. Uh, like I mentioned, I knew I wanted to go into clinical biomedical research, uh, but I didn't really take into account what impact VAI would have on that career goal until now, um, where I'm realizing I got to jump right into studying human disease, whereas maybe at a bigger institution, like Steve mentioned, your curriculum is going to be quite different, quite varied. Um, so I think that's something I wish I considered more when I was considering programs, and I'm just very lucky that I ended up somewhere where I get to do what I want to do for my career. All right, let's go to April with that same question, uh, because this process is not all that far back for you. What do you know now that you wish you had known in the application and admissions process? Um, I think during the entire application and admissions process, I was very intimidated by everyone and very worried about not seeming like I was good enough to come to the Institute. And I think that I would tell everyone that you know more than you think you do. And to try to be confident in what you do know and recognize that no one expects you to know everything. They just want to get to know you and see if you'd be a good fit. Let's pick up on that theme right there. Um, what attributes might a prospective student, those who are listening to today's call, what attributes might they see in themselves that would suggest that they would be a good fit at the Van Andel Institute and at our graduate school? Leslie, you've got the most experience here. What do you think those attributes might be? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the one that shines the most to me is self-motivated. Um, you really have to step outside of your comfort zone and work towards these goals that you've set for yourself um, and take the time to mold your own, you know, academic career and experiences. Um, so being that Van Andel is a small program, you don't blend in and your voice is heard or the lack thereof. So it's really important that you are able to communicate well and network and um, not be shy with um, your ideas. Bailey, would you add some other attributes that a prospective student might recognize in themselves that would say, this is a good place for me? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about, you know, an innate curiosity and a passion for science. I know that when I interviewed, that was something that really came out in the questions that I got asked, um, trying to understand, are you really ready for a graduate program? And are you ready to jump into something that is a, quite a big co commitment um, and just really show that, you know, biomedical research is something you've thought seriously about and you're really ready to jump in and dive deep into that program. April, you were the one of these three students who was most recently walked through that uh, admissions and interview process. But tell us what the interview process was like here at the Van Andel Institute compared to other places that you might have visited. So like the two other places that I visited, um, I was, um, I traveled out to Grand Rapids to see the, um, to see the building, to meet the students um, for, um, I believe it was Friday, Saturday, or it was two days. Yes. Um, it was very nice. Um, I, I really didn't know a whole lot about applying to grad school going into this. So I, it was very nice to um, hear that my travel was paid for. Um, I was fed many meals, which was very nice. Um, 
you come in and you um, you start out with a meeting with Steve Trisenberg and he tells you all about how the program works and what the curriculum is like. You meet with different PIs that you've indicated that you're interested in meeting and you speak with them. Um, one thing that this interview process did differ from the other interviews I went on um, was that there's a panel interview at the end of the day where you speak with um, the admissions committee and they ask you about your research, why you wanted to come to Van Andel, um, different things about you. Um, you spend the end of the day with a group of grad students and you eat more food, um, you travel home. Um, something that I also appreciated was offered to me was um, a tour with one of the students around Grand Rapids just because I'd never been here before. Um, a lot of my personal needs were taken into account during the interview process. And they made sure that I was comfortable and that I got all the information that I needed in order to make a good informed decision. So I'm glad you felt well cared for during the interview process. Uh, and then you chose to come here and we're delighted to have you. Uh, tell us a little about the, the transition, the, the adjustment to graduate school and and how uh, this graduate school supported that transition. Okay, um, so because I was moving from New Jersey, I was given a relocation uh, stipend, which was very nice. It definitely helped buy furniture, make sure that I was able to move all of my stuff out here. And then also, I think one of the things that was really nice about relocating here is at the beginning of the year for the first years, there are a lot of different social events that are aimed at getting you to get to know your fellow students, especially the upper year students who um, you might not otherwise see in classes right away. And it kind of builds this sense of community, which is really nice, especially when you move somewhere brand new and you don't necessarily know anyone around you, you feel like you have kind of some built in friends right away. And then also there's um, scheduled meetings with um, student services. Um, our student uh, affairs person, Ali Roman, really nice. Um, th um, they'll check in with the first years, make sure that they're adjusting okay. You um, address one on one any issues you might be having. Very nice. Thanks for that response. Um, Bailey, you're a little bit further along in the program. Um, at most graduate schools, most PhD programs, there's some step that marks the transition from uh, an early student to a more senior student. Uh, some places call that a prelim exam. Here we call that a comprehensive exam. Tell us about the comprehensive exam here and what that was like for you. Uh, so the comprehensive exam at VI is split into two parts, what they call the on topic and the off topic. And so part of it is you write about a 10 page um, NIH grant style proposal on your thesis project, and then a shorter, maybe five page proposal on a non thesis topic that's uh, unrelated to the research you're doing. And I think the motivation there is to show that you can stand on your own um, and kind of come up with your own research ideas and projects outside of what your PI works on in the lab that you just joined. Um, so, like I said, you spend a lot of time reading and writing up those two proposals um, and then you submit them to the to your comprehensive exam committee and then you do um, about a three hour oral exam. Um, and this is where you get to come in and present the two different projects that you did in a chalk talk style. So for those of you who may not be familiar with what that is, um, it's just a, an informal kind of whiteboard uh, talk where you get to just write up your ideas, draw diagrams and figures and just, it was, and honestly at VI, it was more of a discussion, especially for the thesis project. I felt like I was in that room with people who are examining me, but also they were there to push me and help me get better at thinking and acting like a scientist and learning how to push my thesis project further. Um, and getting to do that off topic was kind of nice because it did give me some confidence that I can come up with a research question and idea on my own and do the, you know, find the research and do the things necessary to propose a project in that realm. And um, it overall is a very rewarding experience and it does feel really good when you get to when you finally pass. 
So you're a little further along in the graduate school experience now. When you think back to that, the, that first year, um, what was particularly valuable for you that you recognize now from those, that first year experience? Um, I think the first year classes really do a lot to prepare you for the next, you know, four to five years, um, particularly in writing and like I mentioned, NIH style grant proposals. So before coming to VAI, I really didn't know at all what an NIH grant looked like. Um, I've never written a grant and I struggled also reading scientific papers. And I remember thinking like, I'm never going to get there. Um, and the classes really do well to prepare you for that because like Leslie mentioned, they're very, um, you have to be self-motivated and it's really on you to do your own learning. And so getting to jump into that curriculum and figure out what, where am I at, where do I need to be uh, to get up to the speed with the rest of my classmates and to be able to push forward in my program. Um, the feedback you get from the professors is really helpful. And I say this a lot, but honestly, after the first year I looked back and thought, I couldn't believe how much I'd grown and how much I learned um, and how much I felt like I was, really was a scientist and I am a scientist. And um, that's something that I, you know, I'm really glad that I chose VI for that reason because it makes me feel very proud to be here. I've got a couple of questions for Leslie too in just a moment, but before I go to those, let me invite those of you who are joining us on today's call to submit your questions to uh, me or to any of the panelists today, you can use the Q&A function in the Zoom software to send those questions in, and we've got some of those already. We'll get to those in just a moment. So Leslie, uh, you're closing in on, on the finishing here. Um, how has your experience at the Van Andel Institute Graduate School prepared you for your future career? Um, well, so this is a loaded question. It, it's just when you reflect on your time at Van Andel, it's really hard to pinpoint the the one or two things that really prepared you for your next steps. It's really a culmination of all my experiences and all these conversations I've had with these researchers over the years. Um, I think that um, what I've learned most from Van Andel is that, and we've already touched on this, staying motivated and creating your own opportunities is so important for preparing you for your next steps. We've got a great question coming in from our attenders today that really goes to each of the three of you. Uh, our participant asks, what does the average day look like? for a second year student, a fourth year student, a sixth year student. And so let's take them in that order. Uh, April, what does an average day look like for you? So um, I have, I'm taking one class right now, I guess, uh, plus two seminar classes, which involve just going to um, seminars and listening and then discussing afterwards. But on a day that I have, um, class scheduled. I'll have class in the morning, which currently is occurring over Zoom. Um, so I'll stay home. It's nice to attend class in my pajamas. Um, then when class is finished, um, I will go into lab. Um, depends on what kind of lab work I'm doing that day, to be honest. But generally, I will go into lab at around noon. And then um, I'll stick around until about 5 p.m. or if I need to stay later, I'll stay later depending on if I have um, experiments running or if I just want to catch up on some reading and um, have a more focused environment to do that. Um, when I get home, I might do more reading. I might be working on a PowerPoint for um, any of the multiple presentations that are asked of me usually. Um, Lost my train of thought, but that's okay. Um, generally, it's a combination of class, reading, and lab work. Um, it really depends day to day, though, just because um, lab is so variable. Mm -hmm. So let's bring this question to Bailey. What's a typical day like for you, Bailey? Um, I, it's very similar, I'd say. Um, 
I'm also taking one or two classes and it's been that way for the past couple of semesters where I usually have one or two that maybe are in the morning or afternoon and so I don't have time blocked out for that. And then outside of, you know, those scheduled lab meetings or classes, your time is really your own. Um, and so I spend most of it in the lab. Um, I try to plan out experiments for the week and get a sense of this is what I want to get done this week. And so depending on how that plays out each day. Um, and like April said, sometimes I'm in the lab really late because my experiments mean that I have to stay longer. Sometimes I leave the lab in the early afternoon and I go home and read or I go home and just take a break. Um, I think once you're past your initial first year courses and a past your comprehensive exam, you really do start to work on what they call your, a maker schedule. You get to make your own time. And that's one of, I think, the perks of being a graduate student because you need that self-motivation to push yourself um, and just find a schedule that works for you. And Leslie, uh, what's a typical day like for you now? Pretty boring. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and being in my sixth year, I mean, we we're expected to be writing and spending this time wrapping up your degree. So um, when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, I, I haven't been to the Institute since March. Um, so I spend most of my time at home with my pup my puppies reading and writing and finishing up this dissertation um, so that I can defend here real soon. Another question that comes from our audience is related to that and asks, how often do you engage with your PI, with your thesis advisor? Uh, do you learn more from the thesis advisor or lab manager or postdoc? Did you want me to take this question, Steve? Uh, any, yeah, sure, you could start there, but other, we'll get the others yeah, as well. Sure, so I think that um, it's different for every lab. Um, and that's one important thing about the interview process is you, just as much as um, they're interviewing you, you are interviewing the institute or any university that you're interviewing at as well. So picking the right lab is critical. And I, I truly think that the laboratory environment is key. So who, who do you want to work with? Do you want to have that close relationship with your advisor, your mentor, your PI? Do you want other students in the laboratory, which I have found to be really useful for myself? Um, all labs are going to be structured differently, whether you work with a postdoc or you're being trained by a lab manager. Um, in my lab, I was primarily trained by our lab manager, but I meet with my um, PI regularly um, and we have one-on-one -on -one meetings that have been really helpful over the years, keeping me on track. Um, but it's really kind of pick your own flavor when it comes to a lab and just making sure it's the right fit for you. April, what about for you? Uh, where's your, what's your go-to source? So what's your connection to your thesis advisor? Um, so, um, our lab manager recently, um, left the lab in order to join the graduate school as a student. So, um, before that happened, um, I would have gone to her for, um, any day-to-day -day questions. Now I think I would go to, um, our postdoc or, um, I also have weekly meetings with my PI where I feel like I can ask any questions that I have and, in the past, if I've had an issue in the middle of the week that I was worried and wanted to address, I've had, you know, a second weekly meeting with her. So um, mostly I feel like I would go to my, um, our postdoc or to my PI. Okay. There are a couple of related questions coming in through the um, question and answer option here. How much what research experience did you have before applying to graduate school and how specific were your interests when you were applying to graduate school? Um, Bailey, you touched on this a little bit. Um, maybe one of the, would you want to elaborate on that? Sure. Um, yeah, so I did about a year mm -hmm. of research before I joined graduate school. So actually not that much. Um, compared to, you know, four years of undergrad. So I was a little nervous. I felt like I didn't have a lot of wet lab experience at all. Um, and as far as my research interest went, I was all over the place. Um, I definitely thought I was gonna go into a neuro lab. 
uh, like I mentioned, I knew I wanted to do biomedical research and something related to human disease, um, but that's really broad still. And so I was just honest about that in my application process. And I think through the first year, I was able to start to find things that I really liked. Um, that's kind of when I was introduced to epigenetics in more detail. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. Um, and I started, I actually chose to rotate in a lab from each of our centers so I could get a feel for different science um, and ended up just kind of falling in love with epigenetics. So I guess my take home from that is you don't need to know exactly what you want to do going into graduate school. Um, you just have to be open and be willing to talk to professors, talk to other students about what science is going on, and what you might actually be interested in doing. Um, and even beyond graduate school, a lot of people will change their science. So it's definitely not something that you feel like you need to have figured out right away. Let's put that same question to April. Um, what research experience did you have before applying and how specific were your interests as you were looking at graduate schools? So when I was applying, I had four years of research in my um, undergraduate years. Um, I was in a very small lab that was not very well funded, so I was kind of limited in what kind of techniques and um, different I don't know, machinery, equipment that I was exposed to, but I did have a lot of time in the lab. Um, when I came to VAI, I had a few things that I was broadly interested in and knew that I would be happy if I ended up studying any of them. Um, I liked epigenetics, I liked development. Um, just, it was just very interesting to hear all of the different areas of study that the different PIs brought to the table and I would say just keep an open mind. You, a lot of the time you might change your mind if you come here. So uh, let's finish with our panel uh, with just a couple of questions. And then uh, Christy Mayo, our Director of Enrollment and, uh, and Records has a, a few things to address. Um, what's your favorite thing about Van Andel Institute that you wouldn't find at another graduate school? Uh, let's start with Leslie. I was just going to take this one. Uh, <laughs> so Van Andel is a very special place. And I think that I'm appreciating that now more than ever, now that I'm at the end. Um, just the, the feeling you get walking into this beautiful institute um, and the sense of community um, while you're there. It's, it's just an environment that really fosters collaboration and um, good, solid professional relationships. Um, okay. What was the question again, Steve? No, what's your favorite thing about Van Andel you wouldn't oh, find at another? And let's Everything, bump that I just love the Institute. And I'm not even saying that because you guys forced me to be here today. It is a truly special place. And I, I couldn't speak highly enough of the Institute. Bailey, is there something that you might identify as a best thing about this place? Um, I kind of would echo what Leslie said, that it is such a collaborative environment and the fact that when you come in as a first year graduate student that you are treated as a scientist. And I think that goes a long way to instill confidence in the students and it really says a lot about the training you're getting at VAI. April, what would you like to add to that? Um, I agree with both Bailey and Leslie that it's a very collaborative environment. You're not competing with the other students. You're not competing among labs. Everyone wants to see each other do their absolute best and help each other to achieve that. There's also just a really amazing amount of support for students. Um, all of the administrative staff know your name. They all care about you. They all want to see you do well. So it's just, it's a very, very special place where you feel like you're part of a larger team. I'd like to add, Steve, the, um, our graduate student association and how close the students are um, in the program is not something that I think you'd find at bigger universities. We all kind of know where each other are at in each one of our individual stages and we really work together to support each other in that process, um, whether we hold chalk talks or just social events um, you know, meet in the cafe, 
these type of things that really bring the students together so that you have a support system um, that is so important in graduate school that you have people that you can rely on and talk to and vent to. Um, and these students really, since we are so small, they become more of a family than just colleagues. Thanks for those responses. A number of the questions uh, coming in from the Q&A have to do with the admissions process. And so let's bring Christy Mayo uh, back on the scene. Christy, you want to move a slide of, ahead? Um, there we go. So tell us about the application process, and then we'll deal with some of the questions that have come in. Sure. Thanks, Steve. Um, so our application is currently live on our web page, and we've got the website um, up on the slide right there. And actually, if you just go to our homepage, there's a big banner across the middle that says apply today that you can just um, click on. Um, and we are part of the BiomedCast application um, cooperative, I would say. So that's a group of biomedical graduate schools that um, are all part of the same application system. So the beauty of that is you only apply once, you fill out your application once, supply your supplemental materials, and you just click on the various schools that you'd like to have your materials sent to. So if you're interested in applying to more than one school, it makes the process a lot easier. Um, we, uh, Van Andel, we do not charge an application fee. So um, in the biomed cast system, depending on how many schools you apply to, there'll be, you know, there's one charge for the first application and then a smaller charge for the additional applications. Um, but there's actually no charge um, to apply to our school. So as I said, it's already open. Um, so our, our deadline is December 1. Um, we do accept applications after the deadline. Um, we just suggest for um, the earliest consideration to get all your materials turned in by December 1, because our admissions committee, um, which is made up of five faculty members and a student, and they do start reviewing those applications pretty soon after the deadline. Um, and the graduate record exam is optional, so we do not require it. If you've taken it and you're interested in submitting the, the scores, you're um, welcome to do that. And just, um, we had a couple of questions that came through the Q&A regarding the number of applicants we get each year, so I just wanted to kind of address that. And it really depends. So we're a young institution. We were founded in 2007. Um, so we haven't been along for a really long time. And the number of applic applications really varies from year to year. I would say last year we had our highest number and we were right around 80. Um, and then we brought in a little over 30 for interviews. And then I believe we made offers to a little over 20. Um, so that kind of gives you an indication of, you know, the number of applications and then kind of bringing it down to um, the acceptance rate. Um, mm -hmm. Steve, did you want to address, there was a question regarding um, the number of students that pass the comprehensive exam? Yes. Uh, so. <clears throat> Bailey referred to the comprehensive exam as the transition to candidacy, uh, that defense of the thesis proposal and a non-thesis proposal as well. To this point, um, nearly all of our students have passed that exam. It's a rigorous exam. We have an external examiner, someone from outside the institute, as well as a team of faculty from inside the institute doing that evaluation. There are times when a student has to remediate some portions, go back and rework part of a proposal or uh, develop better understanding of a particular area of, of concepts and, and, and facts. Um, but following those remediations, uh, students have been successful in passing the comprehensive exam. There was another question about the admissions process uh, asking what's the single most important trait of an international PhD applicant that makes them more competitive. And Christy, you might speak to this as well. I would say that the traits for an international student are no different than the traits we look for in a 
and a student from the United States. We're looking for curiosity. We're looking for passion. We're looking for dedication. We're looking for evidence that the candidate knows what doing science is about, not just learning the facts of science. So some measure of research experience matters as well. Christy, anything to add to that? No, I would totally agree. Okay. <clears throat> Leslie, there's one question uh, that comes in specifically for you. Uh, they'd like to know what you're doing after graduation and how the Institute has prepared you for that path. Yeah, thanks for asking that question. I am actually starting my own company. Um, and uh, I th Van Andel has prepared me in so many different ways, but I think that some of the things that stand out the most is my ability to participate in different committees. Um, and so the Van Andel Graduate School really wants to involve their students in every process of the decision making that goes on at the Institute. So um, there are student representatives on all sorts of committees. One of them uh, that I was able to um, be a part of was the admissions committee, for example. Um, I was also a student uh, organizer for a one day origins of cancer symposium. And I think that those experiences um, taught me a lot about how to, you know, interview people, um, how to you reach out and collect sponsors, which, you know, starting a company is just like sourcing for investors. Um, so there are a lot of different parallels between um, you know, the private, you know, business world and the experiences that I that I gained while at Van Andel for sure. There's one more question that came in uh, to from a participant today asking uh, whether students all transition straight from undergrad to VAI. Uh, overall, the answer is no, they don't all come straight. Uh, a number of our students have worked in various places, some of them here at the Institute or in research positions elsewhere. Some of our students come from military experience uh, and some do come straight out of an undergraduate uh, background. So Christy, uh, I think we've exhausted all of the questions from our audience. Uh, do you wanna finish up here? Yeah, I just wanted to um, let everybody know that we'll be sending out a follow-up email with uh, the recording of this webinar. So if there's something that you missed or you came in late or you wanted to you know, hear an answer again, um, we'll be sending that out for you to listen to and watch. We'll also be following up with um, my contact information. So if you have any emails um, about anything about the application process or the institute or you know, you'd like to talk to someone further, I'm happy to set that up. Um, and our panelists um, also um, volunteered to share their email addresses. So I'll make sure that those are in the email as well, should you have any questions for any of them. Um, we do have one more thing. We were gonna close with um, a quick video that kind of gives you some insight uh, into what the Institute looks like from the inside. So, the, you know, being a biomedical research institute, it's a very secure facility. Um, we don't let people um, come in all the time. And so, we want to kind of give you the, the inside scoop on what the Institute is like from the inside. So if you hold on one second, I'm just going to switch our slides here. And while she's teeing that up, I'll just say thanks to our panelists for joining us today.
Well, thank you all for joining us for the video today, uh, or for the uh, webinar today. We apologize that we don't have the sound on with the uh, video that you're seeing right now of the Institute and its setting. We'll get that connected to the email that Christy sends out to you shortly, so you'll be able to see and, and hear the whole video there. Yeah, we thank everybody for joining us. And we look forward to hearing oh. from you with your questions and uh, and applications. Best wishes, everyone.